Hi everybody, and welcome back to my channel. This is Gio, and we'll be doing chapter 21 of White Silk Lover. Friday, April 30th, evening. Tomas. I told you that bringing Kobe here was too dangerous, Jerry said, pacing back and forth in front of me. You have a certain image to uphold. The guests will expect that, and I won't let you disappoint them. I leaned against the grand piano stashed in the back of the hall, folded my arms, and patiently endured. Are you thinking with your hormones? You can't look at Kobe, Jerry said, standing in my face. You can't talk to him. No eye contact. He's invisible. Pretend he isn't even here. Period. He shouldn't be here anyway. When this is over and everyone is gone, you can maybe say hi. Understood? Understood. This was the reason I wanted to quit. They expected me to conform to their ideas. Jerry had given similar speeches before, so I should be used to it. But I'm not. I unfolded my arms, glared at Jerry, and stood straight. Anything else, Dad? Jerry narrowed his eyes. Yeah, don't drink anything alcoholic. You need a clear head. I'll arrange water or a clear soda, but nothing else. I didn't say anything. Jerry sighed and stepped back. His tone softened a little. At least pretend you are enjoying yourself. It's your sixth album. Most artists don't make it that far. And look what you've accomplished. What if I don't behave? What if I go talk to Kobe? What if he talks to me? It would be so easy to let my frustrations out. Jerry and I had worked together for a long time, and he had given some great advice. But right now, I wanted to hit him. We have constructed your public image very carefully, Jerry said. Don't blow it. And what if I dance with him, I said. Jerry said, Tomas, listen to yourself. Do you want to ruin what's taken six years to build? I wanted to yell, let me be me, but a tantrum would accomplish nothing. Excuse me, Sterling has guests coming. I left him, because if I said what I wanted to, I think I'd have thrown the wig in his face. Ever since that talk with Kelly, something inside of me was slowly changing. First the wardrobe. I didn't look like classic Sterling. No mesh shirt, no skinny pants, and nobody had noticed but the chipped veneer for my tooth was gone. Black jeans, black t-shirt, white spiked wig with blue tips, and another brown bomber jacket matching the one stolen. There had to be a way to escape the prison I called life. One kiss with Kobe and the emptiness was gone. I only had to remember Kobe in a thong and the almost fight with Jerry was forgotten. Kobe was here and I couldn't wait to see him. But first, even though I wouldn't admit it to Jerry, I had to play the game his way. Representatives from my record label were here, and it was time to put on a show. The food was high-end. Champagne for everyone, except me. Jerry brought me water and told me to mingle. We both plastered on fake smiles. Jerry took me to one couple, donors for a hospital or something and another couple, who were millionaires from Texas, a third couple. Time stopped as Kobe came in the room on Joey's arm. I had imagined him in a tux before, but the reality was better than the dream. It made him slimmer, highlighting his cheekbones, his skin tones, the smooth way his muscles moved under the bit of shirt I saw. Almost at once, he saw me and smiled. A subtle chin lift, and I smiled back. I'm glad I invited him. Remember where you are, Jerry whispered, and guided me away from Kobe. Don't blow it. Jerry was right about one thing. I did have guests that I needed to see. It's not my fault if those guests happened to be in Kobe's vicinity. Friday, April 30th, Kobe. I'd figured out the rules. Nobody had to tell me. Pretend that Sterling and I have never met. Simple. Except 
Every few minutes, I stared at Tomas, or he at me. One time, we both laughed. Joey led me to the back of the hall for my sake and Tomas's. Then I fell in severe lust. The hotel had a full concert grand piano in the back, nine feet long, polished rosewood with custom filigree legs, an antique, fancy Steinway, buffed to a mere finish. It wasn't one of those black lacquer pianos that I've seen in every concert hall. This one was reddish brown with striking wood tones and hand carved, detailed legs and music rest. I pulled joy to it. Oh my God, do you know what this is? How rare it is? This baby is easily worth 150 grand or more. I've seen pictures on Google, but never dreamed I would see one in real life. As I touched the polished surface, I opened the back and propped it up. Clean, well kept, the strings were new. Should you be touching that? Joy whispered. The pads were also new. The inside gleamed. It had been refurbished with new materials, and the outsides were almost a century old. Somebody loved this piano. I lifted the cover to look at the keys. The keys had yellowed slightly with age. I softly touched middle C. Joey, listen to that note, I said. A pure tone. It's in tune. Kobe? Joey said. I sat at the bench, played a couple of chords. The sound was like falling in love for the first time. The beauty, the gentle sound, and I knew it could handle White Silk Lover with ease. Instead, I played Whisper, soft, slow, with the rhythm of a torch song in some old bar. Oh my God, this old piano was heaven to play. So smooth, so gentle, so pure, so sensitive. This wasn't a piano. It was a work of art. Each note I played brought out that art. It wasn't me that made the song so beautiful. It was the piano. It had a spirit and a sound that no electronic keyboard ever equaled. Reverently, I sung as I played, soft, feeling the music flow out of me and into the piano and made beautiful. You look like you're seeing heaven, Joey said. I wish Tomas was here. Playing this instrument was a mystical experience and made the whole trip worthwhile. Tomas will be jealous, Albert said. I think Kobe fell in love. I kept the music soft and I closed my eyes, feeling each stroke, each touch, and I shifted from one Sterling Luck song to the next. It was his event, not mine. I snuck in the song from my recital, keeping it soft and gentle and my left hand worked the chords and notes like it had never done before. Background music, that's all this was. But it was magical. Each song had to be soft, had to be mellow, had to evoke the beauty of the antique instrument. It had to let Tomas know that I was here for him, that I loved him. Then I started another song and another, and then a slower, kinder, white silk lover. My hand only ached a little. Friday, April 30th, Tomas. Everybody kept talking, but some people shifted to the back of the room. It was all my songs, and one part of my mind remembered Whisper as the first song. Somebody sang with the music, a tenor, a beautiful voice with a gentle piano accompaniment. The artist transitioned keys and tempo and style, transforming all of my songs into something seductive and mellow. Only one man here could do that off the top of his head. The crowd at the back parted a moment. Kobe sat totally entranced, smiling. Joey and Albert kept watch over him as he played. He did this all from memory, without even looking at the keyboard. I could never hope to be that good. From one song to the next, each transition was perfect. He never misplayed a note, never wavered off key, never stopped smiling, and never opened his eyes. His touch on the keys was magical. Somehow, his fingers brought out a beauty from the old piano that I could listen to for hours. Kobe played his own private concert. If I wasn't in love with him already, 
I'd fall in love with him right now. This was his chance to show off, and I bet he didn't even realize how good he was. You need to make your boyfriend stop before people get the wrong idea, Jerry interrupted. What do you mean? I said. That's him back there playing, Jerry said. I noticed you two staring at each other. It has to stop. Why? I asked, looking back at my boyfriend. Kobe was doing what few people ever dreamed of being able to do, and in that tux, he looked great doing it. My boyfriend cleaned up sharp and sexy. Your image is the most important thing, Jerry said. People may ask questions that we don't want to answer. You need to ask Kobe to leave. It was as if Jerry threw a bucket of ice water on me. I straightened up to my full height and glared at my agent. Maybe Jerry realized he had crossed the line, because he took a step back. You have millions of dollars riding on your image. One person isn't worth that. You and I, I said. One conversation with Kelly, one kiss with Kobe, and one night of goofing around with Conrad. All three of them had changed me. You and I don't seem to understand each other anymore. No, you don't understand, Jerry said his index finger poking me in the chest. If he was expecting me to back up, he was in for a surprise. I gave him the classic sterling stare and let a little bit of my anger out. No, you refuse to understand. Kobe is the only reason I am sane anymore. A few weeks ago, I had given up. I hate my life. I hate what I've become, and I don't see any way out. Then I met Kobe, and we had fun, and he didn't even know who I was. We sang together, We've talked every night since, and somehow my life has become bearable again. Now he knows who I am, and it doesn't matter to him. Jerry said, I understand, believe me, but Sterling must come first. Sterling has come first for six years, and I'm miserable, I said. The crowd closed in around Kobe. You and I have worked with each other for years. You've helped me a great deal, but I need something different. Jerry's eyes widened. Was that a little bit of panic in his eyes? Like what? Jerry asked. I don't know, I said. Right now, I'm going over and flirting with Kobe, pretending we've never met. And if you try and stop me, I'll give you Sterling's wig and tattoos and you can be him for a while. Friday, April 30th. Kobe. As I finished White Silk Lover, I felt someone lean on the old Steinway. I opened my eyes to see the two most beautiful men I have ever known combined into one person. Tomas dressed like Sterling Locke. I didn't hide the smile. Time to flirt. I'm sorry to disturb your party, Mr. Locke, but I had to play this magnificent instrument. It's a classic. They haven't made pianos like this for a long time. Behind the makeup and fake tattoos, Tomas must have tried hard to keep a straight face. His eyes crinkled and his mouth twerked. You look familiar. Have we met? Not really, but I was at your concert back in Vegas. My name's Kobe. This was a fun game, pretending to meet for the first time. I met, then dated one of your backup singers. I remember now, Sterling said, sliding his hand along the smooth side of the polished rosewood antique. You're the guy who lost all the weight. That's me, Mr. Locke, I said. Mr. Locke, Sterling said, the British accent becoming a little more pronounced. Mr. Locke, that makes me sound important. I like it. As I finished the final chords to White Silk Lover, I began a slow rendition of Sterling's heartbeat. Yes, sir, Mr. Locke, can I ask a personal question? Sure, but I get asked one, too. Joy leaned on the far end of the piano, Albert next to her. She glanced to the side, and I followed her gaze. Sam, a little tipsy, was walking this way, and he held a glass of champagne in each hand. Whatever Joy was trying to tell me, I didn't understand. I smiled at Sterling. Do you listen to one of your songs when you're having sex, or somebody else's? A gentle laughter went up from the crowd around us. Albert rolled his eyes. Shameless plug time, Sterling said, crossing his arms. 
and I imagined I saw Tomas laughing under the makeup. Mine. It's a song from my new album called Dancing Under the Sheets. That's rather the forward type of question. I knew the song. Tomas had sent me the music to it a week ago because a part of the chorus didn't fit right. It wasn't one that Tomas wrote, but it was already recorded. But we worked on it anyway. I switched songs immediately from Heartbeat to Dancing Under the Sheets. Nobody noticed but Tomas. I've followed your career for years, Mr. Locke, I said, and you don't respect people who lay down and play dead. You want some life. Somebody who knows me, Sterling said and winked at me. I hoped nobody else saw it. This isn't the question, but I'll lead up to the question. Think carefully. Yes, sir, Mr. Locke, I said, flirting a little. It was Joey's turn to roll her eyes. Sam paused near a waiter, drained one of the glasses, and gave it back to the waiter. I shifted my eyes that way. Joey saw and looked. She tapped Albert's elbow, and he looked at Sam. Tomas had his back to it all. How does your boyfriend kiss? Sterling asked. Do you like it? That threw me, and I both blushed and smiled, and I paused playing the song a second before recovering. Joey looked back at us, snorting. I said, he's quite good. The things he does with his tongue. Keep it family friendly, Joey said. Sterling stepped a little closer to me. Now the real question. Have you ever kissed a girl? Do moms and grandmas count, Mr. Locke, sir? There is no regret for what I did next. Only Joey and Albert would know. If that... I switched to the song Tomas sang at Diggory's weeks ago, but I slowed it down, made it sultry, like something a man would play in a bedroom for a romantic night. Tomas and I had worked on this song for days, and I had played the melody while counting beats and words until I had it memorized. No one noticed the change, except Tomas. His eyes widened, and he shook his head a little, smiling before he composed himself back into Sterling. I'll get you, he mouthed. At the angle he was at, I don't think anyone noticed. Anybody you're related to does not count, Sterling said. No aunts, moms, cousins, stepmoms, sisters, or whatever. A girl around your age, not family related. The comment stung. I used to have a family. Ignore to survive. As I reached the chorus, I played a little softer and flirted back. Never had the interest. Only guys do it for me. Have you ever kissed a guy or been kissed by a guy? As I finished the chorus on his song, I switched to my song, Found and Lost, the one Tomas had turned into a work of art. Only one person in the room would know it. Sterling gave me a chin lift. He recognized it. Outside of family? No, I said. This was a dangerous game. If we continued like I think it would, it would end great for us, but maybe not so much for Tomas's career. Time to be neutral. That's too bad. What's your favorite song on your new album? Wait a minute, Mr. Kobe Wood. Tomas tried to hide the unsterling-like smirk, but I saw it anyway. Again, he composed himself. Been kissed by a guy? Are you saying you want to kiss me? Maybe, I said. You are the sexiest guy in the room, after all. Of course I'm the sexiest, Sterling said, then gave a small smile. Unless you count yourself. With a simple shrug, I began the chorus on my song. I smiled, looked up at him, and uttered the wrong words. And I don't regret them at all. You wouldn't dare kiss a guy. What would happen if you liked it? What would your boyfriend say? Sterling said. For an instant, the accent slipped. Albert giggled? He giggled? The Sterling mask slipped, and once again he was Tomas. It was only for a split second. But there was a sadness in his eyes. He looked at me, and he stood a little straighter. Then his face brightened. I needed to end the game, for Tomas's sake. There was only one way I could think of. Pushing the bench back, I walked over to Tomas and gave him a dainty peck on the cheek. I'll give you the real one later, 
I whispered and took my seat. Phew, crisis averted. You call that a kiss? Sterling yelled. That was an insult. This is how it's done. My eyes widened, crisis not averted. Sterling tilted my head and planted one on me. Deep, full tongue, sloppy. And I loved it. Our tongues danced. Our lips were super glued together. I sat there in absolute paradise. This was my fantasy for the last two years, and it hit something deep inside me. Very deep. The music of Sterling Locke had changed my life. Even though I knew that Sterling Locke was only an advertising gimmick, the man underneath became even more real than the fantasy. And I loved him. Sterling broke contact, leaving me dazed. We stared at each other, both of us slowly grinning. I had messed up his makeup and smeared his lips. That's how Sterling Locke does things, Tomas said. Joey burst out laughing. Albert joined her. The crowd stayed quiet a moment, then erupted. Me? I couldn't stop smiling. Tell your boyfriend to top that, Sterling said. Another chin lift, and Sterling walked off, also smiling. Somebody asked, how does he kiss? Somebody else asked, will your boyfriend get jealous? And somebody else, who kisses better? I wiped my lips and said, they both do. I smiled as well, but I couldn't compose myself. Joy was at my side, her hand hiding her grin. She held a napkin and wiped something off my chin. You need to take a break. I chuckled. Idiot, Sam shouted across the hall. Both Joy and I turned. Sam took a swing at Sterling. Sterling's head came off. No, I knocked the antique bench over as I ran to Tomas, Joey at my side. Thank you, everybody, for joining me for Chapter 21 of White Silk Lover. I appreciate you listening. Until next time, have a great day and peace.